Councillor Cordova. Thank you, Mayor. I will try and explain why I think this really should be deferred for tonight and moved until after May 2022, because in May, as it says in the report, the European Food Safety Agency, which has done a very comprehensive two year study into this, will be releasing their report. And it's going to be quite important, I think, that if we're going to have an informed, evidence-based and data-driven discussion, that we actually use the best, most authoritative um, mechanisms available. And I do thank um, I do thank the staff for preparing a comprehensive response. But I had a very fascinating time in researching this topic quite extensively. And I think we need to be aware, firstly, of the safety of the science, of the research that is available, of the alternatives, the risks, the budgeting and the costs. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to make sure that we don't spread the wrong message about um, the safety of uh, glyphosate. And the, the reason I say that is if you actually look to the International Agency on Cancer Research as auspiced by the World Health Organization, they have various categories. And I'll note that in this report, we do talk about um, the uh, we do talk about glyphosate, but we never talk about what else is in those categories um, as as auspiced by the World Health Organization. So they do include things like, well, I'll just make the point that um, they do include things like uh, very hot beverages, beverages over 60 degrees centigrade, um, emissions from frying, high temperature frying. Um, in the same category as glyphosate is is red meat, but in the above category, the higher category, it's actually processed meats. So, you know, your salami, um, sausages, bacon, these are a higher category of carcinogen than glyphosate. Um, occupational exposure for hairdressers and barbers as a result of colorants and dyes is in the same category as glyphosate. Um, the, the court cases that have happened for glyphosate have been full-time landscape gardeners. Um, the, the level of exposure is not the same for a child playing on play equipment as it is for uh, a full-time landscape gardener. But importantly, we actually need a workshop to look at the results of the comprehensive science that's being done on this so that we can actually have an informed conversation. Because, of course, in Category 1, so glyphosate is in Category 2, but in Category 1 is sunlight, right? So sunlight is a carcinogen. Um, alcohol, outdoor air pollution. Now, these are all Category 1 carcinogens. And the reason for that is that it's all about the level of exposure that you get. So I actually do have a question about the kind of paint that our, um, my understanding is that most paints, playground equipment paints are acrylic latex based paints, and they are the same category as glyphosate. So unless we're going to, we just need to treat this with the science, the scientific rigor that it deserves, because it would be silly to um, do a blanket ban on glyphosate without contemplating what the science says. And then at the same time, allow paint on the plague equipment to be exactly the same carcinogenic category as glyphosate. What I'm trying to emphasize here is that the, the information is available and we need our weed officers to explain it to us. And we need to have a dialogue together that is evidence based and data driven. Otherwise, we really do risk having um, uneven and really misinformed uh, rules around this, because, of course, I would wager that the exposure to a child of hot chips and and deep fried food is far more prevalent than glyphosate. So maybe our efforts, and certainly when it comes to the painting of the play equipment, if the play equipment paint is of the same carcinogenic category, let's have a conversation about what our priorities are here, because I feel like just by pushing this ban without following the evidence, uh, we risk actually creating um, unease within the community. And we have to remember that Kingbury is not the first place in the world to consider glyphosate use. Uh, we have been working with Byron Shire Council with Whit Sunday Council. I'm aware that we're not the very first council to ever come across this issue and the fear within the community about this. That's why I really emphasise that the best thing that we can do is wait for the European Food Agency report to come out in May, have a workshop about it, and then talk about how we best communicate this with the community so that we're not spreading misinformation around um, what you know the the great fear that people have in the community about this issue so uh with that i now move to defer this until after the may 2022 report comes out and, and we have a workshop on it okay i have a motion for deferral do i have a seconder for that motion councillor fox so the motion is that the matter be deferred um it's moved by councillor cordova seconded by councillor fox all those in favor please raise your hands 
It is, uh, so we have in favour is Council of Fox, Was, Bastogne, Street, Cordova, Westwood and Reet. Those against? Councillors Gladewright and Midgley. The motion to defer the matter is carried.